Hi everyone, so thank you so much for joining me. Um, I, I just thought I would do a quick live to, uh, to talk about the Copper Plate catch-up class that we had last night, which was amazing. Um, so we, we, we started our Copper Plate catch-up classes last night where we covered two groups, uh, the majuscules A, M, V, W, and N, and the, um, and the next three groups, H and K, I and J, and T and F. And it made a huge difference. Uh, Steve, thanks so much. I'm so glad that you, you found that really useful. I, I, I've, I've had some, some really wonderful comments. Oh, thanks, Debbie. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, and, you know, I, I thought that what I would do is I would encourage some of you to, to join the, the catch-up classes because the, the aim of the catch-up class is to help those of you working with Copperplate script gain a better understanding of the script and why the script works the way it works. Um, but also, why when you write it, the letters don't work? That, that's the key here. Because it's one thing me showing you how to write it, but it's a very, very different matter when you learn why when you write it, it doesn't work. So it, it's that kind of detail we go into. Um, so I, I, thought I'd, I thought I'd share some little snippets from the, the class last night with you. So... Just watching myself there. <laughs> um, right. Uh, let's put this down a little bit. And zoom in here. So, here are some of the some of the things we decided to look at. just gotten another light for the studio because this uh this light's a little bit far away from the camera um so what one of one of the biggest takeaways that i wanted students to have was a better understanding of what they're actually doing so this is This is a straight holder, and with a straight holder, you get the line of universal beauty. So no, notice I've, I've, just, I've just put quite a lot of pressure on that shape, and I'm trying to keep it a little gentler, a little bit more delicate. Because I know a lot of people, when they think of pointed flexible nibs, they think press. And it's not about pressing. So, you know, if you're writing, if you're writing a word, most people would do this. Because the tool can do that. But ideally, what you really want is you want you want that. Now, look at these two. This is so much more delicate and it's so much more beautiful. And it, it only comes with controlling a pointed flexible nib gently. Now, one of the biggest issues with the study of copper plate script is many people use Nico G nibs or Zebra G nibs. These nibs are not made for copper plate script. They are not made for calligraphy. They were originally made for the drawing of manga and because they were made for the drawing of manga, they are smooth and slick. And because they are smooth and slick, 
they control a lot of the movement around the writing. So I, I didn't intend on doing this. Um, just gonna, uh, I'm just going to grab a, a G nib. I don't, I don't, I don't have any G nibs uh, inserted into holders. Uh, there's one. So there's a G nib. My my problem with with demonstrating with a G nib is it's so rigid, it's so rigid that I have to press so hard to get it to do what I want it to do. And that that scores into the paper. So I I tend to hold the tool quite steeply. So I'm, I'm holding it flatter. And the smoothness of the nib is forcing the line of universal beauty to spread in, in an odd sort of way. So let's... So if you look at the deposition of weight, you can see that something is not right with this shape. The aim of these catch-up classes is, is to teach you this kind of thing. Now, when we use a, a, a sharper nib, so this is a Hunt 22B that I'm using. Always mark off. I, I, can, I can keep the weight in the middle two-thirds. Now, remember, the thing about copper plate script is this. <clears throat> You, you need to be conscious of the script because copper plate script is about starting with a hairline and finishing with a hairline. So essentially it is that, but at 55 degrees. Different nibs produce different types of hairlines. This is a Jalot 303. And you see something very, very different with the Jalot 303. It's much finer. It, it has a sort of finesse to it. Um, I have another 22B sitting around here. And it's a little bit newer than the one I've just been demonstrating with. And it's a little bit sharper, uh, but it's also a little bit more rigid. So that, 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 that tells you that even though the nibs come from the same manufacturer, they are all going to be just a little bit different. So each nib is, 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 a, is, is a little world in and of itself. Now, when we do copper plate script, let's go back to this. Where's that 22? Here it is. When we do copper plate script, and remember, copper plate script is not English round hand. Copper plate script derives out of English round hand, and those of you who follow me, you know that I, I believe that copper plate script starts at around 1850 because that's when we start using pointed flexible metal nibs. Prior to that, it is, um, it is we're using quills, and so the, sh the structure and shape of the lines is, is different. Uh, so when we write with copper plate script, and remember, hairline up. So we, we always have a hairline and weight and a hairline and weight. So if you're doing an M, you, you have this. The reason for this is That's a cap based on Roman caps. So obviously it's a, a pointed pen version of Roman caps. That tells us that this is lighter and that's heavier. You know, with an M we have So we have light, heavy, light, heavy. So what does that tell you? That tells you 
That tells you that this is wrong because you are not moving from left to right. You're moving from right to left. We don't write from right to left. We write from left to right. So the script has to go in that direction. Now, if you are, if you are keen on doing weight on the hairline, then make sure it is not the same weight that you're going to put on the heavier stroke. My problem with this starts when you end up with this kind of thing. So you're going to have weight and weight and no weight and weight rather than no weight hairline weight hairline weight There's, there is a reason that the scripts are constructed in this way so it, it's really important we, we we understand how and why the script looks the way it looks and a big part of this is actually looking at the, the historical English round hand scripts. Now, in English round hand, we have some beautiful ligatures. So those of you who attended the ligatures workshop, There is a stunning flourished M. And you can see weight, no weight, a little bit of weight, no weight, weight, no weight, weight, no weight, weight, no weight. And so by, by, by looking at the structure of the historical letters, we really gain a deeper insight into why the letters look the way they look. Just haphazardly writing them and assuming that they work the way they're supposed to work doesn't really help you understand the script because it it not only it not only creates a false impression of the script it also confuses beginners so you know i'm 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 really really uh, conscious of, i i am very conscious of teaching correctly so if i'm going to do something i do the research for it you know those of you who have attended the classes um you know that there is a lecture and that lecture gives you an historical context. And then we have a workshop. There is a reason that I set, set that up in, in that fashion so that you had context and you could understand why I was teaching you the way I was teaching. So I, I'm not leaving anything to chance. You, you don't see me teaching something that I don't know about. Now, obviously I do Roman caps. I don't really like writing with Roman caps. I, I never have. Um, and so I don't teach it because, you know, there's the stuff that I know about it that, um, that I, I think, you know, would be really amazing to share. But you know what? There are other people teaching Roman caps. Go and learn Roman caps from them. I, I teach what I know because I really know it and I really love it and I'm really passionate about it. And I want people to have the correct information because I want people to grow correctly. So, you know, it's, it's important that you take the time and you accept that this is your responsibility. It's your responsibility to learn correctly. And equally, it's your responsibility to share correct information. You know, if you're putting out something there and you're saying something is copper plate script, then make sure it's copper plate script. You know, if, if you're not sure about it, then then leave a disclaimer so that you, you know, so that you're not misguiding beginners because there are always people coming in and they will always look at your work and they will see your work probably before they see mine. They will also look at your work and think your work is achievable instead of mine because mine just looks so difficult. But that means that those you have a responsibility to those people so that they know that for, for you, this is you trying to figure it out. If you call something copper plate script, then make sure it's copper plate script. 
You know, if you call it italic, make sure it's italic. Do some research. Really present that correct information. Now, as you can see, I'm, I'm, I'm very, very passionate about this because, you know, I've, I've devoted my life to calligraphy. I've done this all my life. And if you are coming into this craft that I've devoted my life to, I, I expect you to have the respect for it as well. You know, for those of you who have trained in a profession, you, you spent time training in that profession. So if somebody comes into your profession and starts spouting incorrect information, then I'm sure you will get angry. You know, we, we do it with everything else, but we don't do it with calligrapher, with, with calligraphy. So, you know, why, you know, why? And it's not just that, you know, we, we do it in the West. You know, in the East, they are so rigid about their scripts because they have such respect for them. And we, we don't seem to have that. So I, I, I think, you know, it's, it's time. You know, th this is not 30 years ago when you couldn't get access to tools and materials and, and, and research materials. This is now. You could go online and actually do some research. And if you can go online and do some research, if you can spend the time looking for 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 um <laughs> if you can spend the time looking for for tools beautiful tools and and learning to write with them you could spend the time looking up the history of the script you know come on guys you know if 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 we don't if if we don't stand up for this the scripts the history and the accuracy that we we see in the scripts it's 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 going to be for nothing now one of the other reasons I want, one of the main reasons I wanted to do this live was to show you something that, that I think is really important. And that is this. I know, I know Debbie, you know, he's just, he's just pulling my leg. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> look, everybody's correcting you. <laughs> uh, crazy doctors. Um, so, I, I want to show you what happens when you use the wrong tool for something. This is a straight holder. Come on. Come on. Come on. So with a straight holder, the weight is equally deposited in the in in the two-thirds of the line. If we use an oblique holder, and you know lots of you use oblique holders to do copper plate script with, and this is what happens. So already I have to concentrate to keep that on the 55. Now the holder, because of its because of its its relationship here, it doesn't have a tendency to move. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm holding the holder this way, right? So I, I, I would want to bring the back of the holder to my shoulder. But that's not possible because it's an oblique holder. So I want to make sure that the back of the holder is away from my shoulder. That means that I'm going in a, an odd sort of direction. So what I'm doing is I'm bringing the back of the nib towards my shoulder. And what tends to happen is, this is the 55 here. This is not on the 55 because the tendency is the direction to halve the movement. And so what that does is instead of staying on the 55, unless you're really caught, look, I'm, I'm trying to stay on that 55 and I'm, I'm, I'm always off it by just a little bit. The, the other thing that, a, that an oblique holder does, remember oblique holders were not made for copper plate script. They were developed for Spencerian script. They were not developed for copper plate script. So historically, copper plate script would have been written with a, um, with a straight cut quill 
uh, with a quill, but you know, but it would be straight. There were no oblique quills. I mean, could you imagine oblique quills growing out of geese? <laughs> um, and so the other thing the holder does is, because the flange is so flat, so that's 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 where it should be if it was if it was here. Because the flange is tilted, it's flatter. And so when you go to write with it, that's the angle it's approaching the page at. And because that's the angle it's approaching the page at, the tines have a greater tendency to spring open. But look at this. So I'm going to try to stay in the middle. But this, this already feels, even though I'm staying in as much of the two-thirds of the line as possible, this already feels like it's, uh, there we go, it's, it's just off. It's just off that 55, but also the deposition of weight is not in the correct place. The other thing that happens here is I can stay on the 55 with a straight holder. With an oblique holder, I'm, 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 I'm moving around the 55. An oblique holder was developed to... I just need some paper because my desk is a little bit sticky. The oblique holder was developed to... To work for Spencerian script because the movement of Spencerian script is different from copper plate script. So do you see how this line occurs? That's a Spencerian line. So the, the lower the angle of the tines of the nib to the paper, the easier the tines spring open. And they spring open and they, and they snap shut. Um, yeah, so, you know, Spencerian was developed using a straight holder, but the, the structure of the script works very well um, with an oblique holder because of the shape of the minuscules as well. So, you know, when you have... When you have these letters, which are very small, the, the tines are just bouncing on the page. Now notice not all of the letters, not all of the weight is the same, because of course in copper plate script, Every time we go down, we apply pressure. And look, I'm, I'm doing this with a straight, with a, an oblique holder. The weight is lower. So I'm, 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 I'm really having to do the work to make this work. Whereas if I, if I do it with a straight holder, I come up and over and press. And you, you really see that the straight holder produces, helps to produce the shape much more easily. In order to get a straight holder to do Spencerian script, you have to tilt the holder. Sorry, my desk is a, is a little bit warm. You have to tilt the holder to get it to produce this deposition around around the shape, unless you're working really flat. And of course, that means changing the way that your hand is working, uh, is holding the tool. 
So when we when we use oblique holders for for copper plate script, the tendency is for the script to end up in off the fifty five. But there are also some other tendencies for uh, an oblique holder. So oblique holders produce weight there. So remember, that's the shape you're aiming for. Whereas with copper plate script, you want... <laughs> Never ever works for me. And, I, 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 and it's because I'm, I'm, I'm really aware of the subtlety of the line. And also, I'm, I'm aiming for a lighter line. I'm not aiming for, for you know, a, a, a heavy line all the time, which is what most people tend to aim for. You have weight at the top. Do you see how the distribution is here? Or weight at the bottom. Weight in the middle is not quite there. Again, look look at how much of this line has a hairline and weight, and look at where it is in comparison to the straight holder lines. So there are lots of lots of issues that a, an oblique holder will generate when you're writing copper plate script. Uh, you know, Oji, that's great because, you know, I, I, I always tell students when you're doing copper plate script, a straight holder helps you to remember the copper plate letters. When you're doing Spencerian script, a, Spencer, a Spencerian holder helps you to, to think of those Spencerian letters. But also, an oblique holder helps you to, to do the exercises that you need for Spencerian script. Because the holder is flatter, it allows for that particular movement, especially with muscular movement. To use muscular movement with copper plate script requires a little bit of a shift. So for those of you writing copper plate script with a, a, an oblique holder, when you come to crossing the T, what happens? You have to do this because you, you can't do this. So problem letters are L, turn, press, and out. So let's look at that again. T, which you can actually do in one go. You just have to set it up. Turn. Q, turn, of course, T and F. With a straight holder, with a, sorry, with an oblique holder, how do you do this? You can only do this or How, how do you, how do you get is 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 that how you're approaching it? Now, this also presupposes that you understand the difference between English copper plate, English round hand, engrossers and engravers. Now, if you look at it engrossers and engraver script, you'll see that Look at this here. Do you see how this is sitting down here? And with a straight holder, the deposition of weight is already the line is lighter. And the deposition is 
on the 55. This is the 55 here. And the deposition here is not on the 55. In fact, this is already off the 55. So when you're writing the script, are you, are you really aware that this is happening? Or are you, are you just, you know, happy to write pretty letters? Because if you're happy to write pretty letters, then great. Then, then I'm happy for you. But if your aim is to produce something that is beautiful and accurate based on its historical information, then, then look at the thing. Look at the letters more carefully. Look at it more accurately. Be brutal with yourself. Sit there with a, you know, with a, 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 a pen and correct it. So, and I've, I've said this so many times. So often I see people put pages and pages of, 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 um, of letters. Oh, I've done this as a practice. And not once do I see any corrections. There are no corrections. So how, how, how do you know what to correct when you do the next page of practice? So I will sit down and I will go through this. I mean, obviously, there's not practice, but I, so, so I, let's, let's look at the practice. So what's happening here? I've, I've missed the line. I've touched the line up here, so that's fine. But something's wrong with the space in here versus the space in here. That stayed on the 55. That's on the 55. That's great. Let's look at the ellipses. What's happening with the ellipses? They're good. And the overriding ellipse. Is it divided down the center? Mm, yes, yeah, that's fine. That's, that's okay. And the balance at the top versus the bottom. So what's, what's happening here? And what's happening here? Remember, it's, it's not about what you're seeing. It's about what you're not seeing. Does this sit inside that space nicely? Or is there a, another issue that you're not being aware of? So, you know, knowing what happens with your nibs is really important. If you start off with a G, give it a month. And after a month, get off that, that nib graduate to a more complex nib because copper plate script is not about pressing it's about delicacy and the g nibs force you to press harder when you want to learn to not press so i'm going to use my one of my prototype nibs
expertise of the prototype. You know, this prototype nib is so soft, it wears away so easily. But also it's, it's so difficult to use because it's so fine. Uh, and, and so that's, that, that requires you to, to get to a point of being able to use this nib in a way that, that is just, it's just insane. Okay, so uh, let's, let's take some questions. Let me, let me just show you this. So there's, there's the fineness of that line there. Some balance, right? Let's um, let's swap this around and have a look. What some of your questions are? I'm just grappling with people needing to be more responsible for the craft. Um, you know. <laughs> You train, you train in a profession and you expect people to respect your profession. So I expect you to respect my profession. Um, it's, it's, it's really important that we, that, that, that we made aware of, of this kind of thing. Okay. So my iPad has just died on me, so I have to use the phone as well now. So again, you know, those of you who, who stayed on for the live, thank you so much. Those of you who joined us last night for the copper plate catch-up classes, thank you so, so much. You know, there, there's a class tomorrow, there's one on Sunday. Um, I, I put up a post uh, to say thank you, well, a post of, uh, you know, the beauty of calligraphy using a combination of the ligatures, which I, 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 I taught on Sunday last week, uh, which is amazing. The ligatures workshop is, is outstanding. Uh, an entirely new system of, of categories for how to, to, to consider how ligatures work. Um, I, for those of you who took the class last night, I would love for you to put a post up on the Beauty of Copper Plate uh, post that I did today, just sort of talking about how the class was and how you felt it worked and, and, and more importantly, how you felt it helped you. Because, you know, I, 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 can, I can teach till the cows come home. I, I, I can spend six hours teaching you about the minuscule E and why it varies so much and how those little variations can dramatically affect the structure of a word where that letter exists. But I, I can teach this constantly, but it's when you start to, to see an improvement in the work that you are doing, that that's when it really starts to, to, to sort of have gravity because it, it's about how all of this information that I've amassed, it's about how that information helps you. I need you to, to want to get better. I need you to want to, 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 to be brilliant. I don't need you to reinvent the wheel. I've, I've, I've made the wheels. I'm giving the wheels to you. I, I need you to take those wheels and work with them, you know, be responsible for your script. Be responsible for what you're teaching people. Because, you know, it's, if, you, if you get a beginner stuck because they believe that what you're teaching is correct, that's your fault. That's not my fault. That is your fault. Because I spend the time putting together this content so that you can, you can grow, that I can help you. You know, be conscious of your tools. Do you, you know, lots of you have all these beautiful oblique holders and you know, there's some brilliant manufacturers out there and, 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 and hand makers making these amazing tools. But if you're buying a tool, learn how the tool works. You know, if you, if, if you don't know what the tool actually does to the script, you will never be able to produce the script in a way that, that, that you want. Also, if, if you don't know what the script looks like up here, it's never going to happen down here. Because it's only when it's here does it travel down the neck and it travels down the arm and it gets stuck in the elbow and, you know, and you're on that plateau and you're just like, oh, I'm not getting better. Then it finally gets down to the hand and you're like, oh, look, there it is. And then, of course, you know, you start going up the hill again because there's another plateau. You know, you, and then your, your, your eyes start to catch up with your hand and then eventually your eyes take over your hands and your hand's still behind because it still hasn't traveled down, it's stuck in the elbow. And it, it's a constant process of learning. And as you are learning, 
You know, it's great posting your work because posting your work shows that you're, you're working at it, that you're practicing. But it's also important to, you know, to ensure that you post a disclaimer. You know, if, if you're talking about practice, talk about the practice. Don't say things in absolute. You know, I talk about copper plate script because I can speak about copper plate script in an absolute way. The copper plate script I teach you is mine. I developed it. The geometric copper plate is mine. I developed that. So I can speak about it in an absolute way. If you are doing copper plate script and you say, oh, you know, I'm using PA Scribe's geometric copper plate and this is what I've discovered. Great. But if you just say it's copper plate and it's not really copper plate, then, then that, that's a problem. You know, the English round hand stuff that I talked to you about, I talk about it from a place of knowledge because I've, I've, I've done this research. You know, I've been researching English round hand for 22 years. And, and I still don't know as much as I want to know about it. But I'm, I share what I know and I share it within the context of the script. Learn about your tools. It's really, really important. Uh, so what kind of holder should we going to use? A cheap holder? <laughs> you know, what's the point in wasting money? In fact, you know, let, let's go back. What kind of holder should a beginner use? Don't use a holder. Use a pencil. Use a pencil. Try and figure out what the skeletal structure of the script is. What is the point in using a holder with a nib and ink, struggling with the ink, struggling with the nib, struggling with the paper, because you don't really understand how they interact. You haven't spent the time looking at how they interact, but you, 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 you want to write with them but you have to learn the script as well. So you have four problems to cope with. How is the script going to grow? That, that's not how learning works. Start off simple. Learn with a pencil, learn with an HB pencil. Take a cheap pencil, you know, get tons of them. You, you will get through them, really. You will really get through them. Then move to a more complex pencil like a 4B or a 6B pencil. Get tons of those because you will Eat through those like you cannot believe. Once you are really confident with the script and you're comfortable and you're, you're, you're competent, move to the nib because then you're not fussing about the script. You're fussing about the ink and the nib and the paper. Or you, you, you sort of know the script. This makes your life so much easier. If you have one less problem to cope with whilst you're trying to learn the script, you're not going to struggle. You're not going to get frustrated. You're going to be more patient with yourself. If you have four problems at the same time, that, that's asking for frustration. <laughs> um, you have just cleared all my frustrations about these strokes. That, that's great. That's great, Angel Surf. I'm really happy to hear that. Uh, so a good nib for copper blade script. Again, it depends on where you are. Um, so you have an Nico G if you're starting off. I would recommend something like a, a Jalot 1068A because they're not coated. They're a little bit rough. And so you could feel what's happening at the nib and how the nib is interacting with the paper. G nibs are very smooth. And so you, you lose that sensation. I, I get students to close their eyes and, and, and just feel the nib on the paper. If the nib is really smooth, you, you can't feel it. It's like a record player. You know, the, the needle on the record player can pick up the grooves on the record. I'm talking about a record player and lots of you are sort of looking at the screen. Going, what is he talking about? <laughs> um, it's the same thing with the nib. The nib has to, it, it, it has to be able to, to transmit the information of what the paper feels like through the nib, up through the pen staff into your hand. And if you can't feel that, then you're not building that sense of, 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 of delicacy in the writing. So if you start with an Nikoji, graduate on to something more complicated, like a Hunt 22B, I wouldn't go to Hunt 101 because it's very flexible. You need to learn control. The 22B is a great nib. It's a brilliant workhorse nib. Um, it doesn't get damaged as easily as the other nibs. The Gelot 303 is super to work with. Absolutely wonderful, brilliant, fine. That I always say the thing that makes gives it its greatest advantage or also gives it its greatest disadvantage. The sharpness of the nib 
allows these beautiful hairlines, but it also allows the nib to get stuck in the page and splatter and all kinds of things. You only learn how to work with that nib by graduating through the nibs. Uh, I saw somebody wrote about a blue pumpkin nib. I, I generally don't use blue pumpkin nibs because I don't find the hairlines are fine enough. Uh, but also, the problem with the blue pumpkin nib is if you press, the ink drops onto the page. So you have to find ways to work around these issues. Uh, thank you, thanks, Jinji. Thanks, um, thanks, So Debbie says, experience helps one to understand when the nib is no longer working. But that's a brilliant comment because you get stuck with that nib because you like it and it's, it's helped you through a lot. But as the nib starts to wear away, the sharpness also starts to wear away. I always tell students, don't throw away your copper plate nibs. They have a second life. You can take a pair of wire cutters and just cut the tip off. You know, the tip that you've worn off, just cut it off. And you end up with this beautiful little broad edge nib that has a little bit of flex in it. It's, it, it, it's a whole different way of writing broad edge scripts. Uh, da, 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 da. Just ordered the Gelot 303, but still didn't try it. So just remember, don't put it through a flame. These nibs are very, very fine. They are heated in order to treat them. And that Heat treatment tempers the nib and hardens the steel so it lasts for longer. When you put this through a flame, you don't see that you're changing the temper in the nib. When you change the temper in the nib, the nib wears away really quickly. The tip, especially the tip, disappears. Uh, if you're using something like a uh, walnut ink, it's brilliant. Uh, Sumi or, or, you know, this Kurotaki Vermilion is, is brilliant. I always add a third more water to my Kurotaki Vermilion for copper plate script. So I have a bottle for copper plate and spencer, and I have another bottle for broad edge calligraphy because the, the inks need to be different consistencies for the different scripts, you know, broad edge scripts. Spencerian script is much finer, a thinner ink. Don't use iron gall ink because if the iron gall ink has ferric oxide in it, it will corrode the tip of the nib and you will very quickly lose that beautiful sharpness. So be really, really careful with the nibs you're working. Thank you, Debbie. I'm, I'm glad you enjoy the lectures. You know, I, I put so much work into these lectures and we've, we've made sure that we've kept them, you know, really affordable. Not just because, you know, people are struggling with COVID, but because I want people to actually go to the lectures and, and spend some time learning about the history of the craft. What is the point in doing the writing if, if you're not going to spend the time having the background for it? The background is what gives you the, the sort of the, the information to propel your craft, to propel you into the craft. You know, just picking up a tool and writing with it is, is that's, that's not enough. You know, if you're happy with that, then, 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 I'm, then, then great, you know, knock yourself out. But that's, that's, that's not how... That's not how we improve. We have to know where the script comes from in order to know what to do with it. And then in order to know where to take it to. Thank you very much, OJ. Responsibility is, is definitely a, a key here. As a beginner, I find that I learned incorrectly and suffered pain and frustration when I had to. Yeah, I, I'm glad you find the, 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 the work invaluable. You know, we, we, we film all of the lives uh, and I post them on Instagram, I post them on, on Facebook as well for different groups. But, you know, all our events, we put up on Teachable. And so they're accessible and people can go back to them and they, they can really sort of sit with them and study with them. That big lecture I did on three and a half thousand years of the Western alphabet, looking at the history of us, of our, our calligraphic period. I've had some amazing comments. I've had people messaging me saying, I've, 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 this is the fifth time I've watched this lecture. I watch it every week. And I sit back going, how did I miss that? And there is a lot of information there to, to, to show you that our calligraphic period is, is not just copper plate script. You know, those of you just doing pointed pen work, if you are just doing modern calligraphy, your calligraphic period is only 10 years. We have, we have, 
we have two and a half thousand years of Western script writing. And, and that's just Western script, not even talking about what we have in, in, in the East, you know, what the Chinese have, what the Japanese have, what the Tibetans have, what the Indians have with their beautiful Sanskrit and what the, what the Arabs have with Arabic. None of this. Just, just us, just the Western script, just Latin script. And, 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 and you, you, you only have 10 years. You, you, you're just a child. You need to, you need to dig. You need to look at where does modern calligraphy come from? And why does it come? Why does it exist the way it does? So once you start to understand why modern calligraphy looks the way it looks, those of you struggling with modern calligraphy, go and learn copper plate. I, I can guarantee if you learn copper plate script correctly, your modern calligraphy will dramatically alter. How many of you write modern calligraphy? And this, this is something that really, really annoys me. People writing modern calligraphy and it's, it, it, it's so rough and shaken because there's no control over the tool. You know, I have friends like Susan Cunningham or Bianca Mascora, uh, there's Angelique. There's some great modern calligraphers out there and you look at their work the lines are beautiful and smooth and there's no coarseness to it. That, that comes from learning traditional script. You know, you, the, the scripts don't stand alone. They stand on the backs of each other. The Letterform Archive is a great resource. Uh, the guys there are, are brilliant. They're very, very helpful. Rachel, thank you so much. I'm, I'm really glad that you've spoken up as well. I'm a bit frustrated that many teachers taught beginners copper plate using an oblique holder. Yeah, because you see, people don't really do the research. Go and do the research. You will see that what, when somebody's teaching you copper plate, are they, really te are they really teaching you copper plate? Or are they teaching you engrossers? Or are they teaching you engravers? Do they know the difference between copper plate engrossers and engravers? Because there's a huge difference between these scripts. I've had so many people to say to me, oh, what are the differences? And I, I've, I've explained this so many times. But why are you asking me? Why, why haven't you taken the time to look at these three scripts together? And with your limited knowledge, look at them. As soon as you look at them and really look at them, you'll start to see. You need to do this. You have to take the time to do this. I can tell you about it. But it's only when you take your time to actually look at it, do you start to see what is going on. Uh, so I'll save this live in the, in the IGTV. Uh, I like doing freeform and the principles of design from one great artist. And, and you know what? If, if you like freeform work, that's great. But don't call your freeform work copper plate. Make sure that you're, you're telling people that it's freeform. Um, blah, 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 blah. Is it hard? Okay. Yeah. I mean, accuracy is really critical. Widespread issue of widespread issue of copper plate styles, right? So th this is a really, really good point. The word copper plate script. How does it work? What is it applicable to? And and when we talk, like I just said about engrossers and grave and engravers, yes, they fall under a, a sort of pointed pen script construct, which is generally this umbrella of copper plate script, but they're not copper plate script. They have their own names for a reason. Yeah, and you know, Rohan, you're right. When you when you when you use a straight holder, you you have so much control over what it does. When you're using an oblique holder, if you flatten the flange for Spencerian script, the, the tines just spring up on you. You have no control. You really have no control over this. So, I, you know, I talked about this thing about copper plate script English round hand and grossers and gravers and and copper plate. I talked about all of this in the lecture on copper plate script. Go to the lecture, go to Teachable, get the lecture, have a look at it. It really is only five pounds, you know, and it will dramatically change the way you see this, this script that you write. Um, okay, so I talked about the pumpkin nib, talked about the Nico G nibs, it's fine. Uh, <laughs> yep, doesn't allow for delicacy. And, and you see, this, this is the other thing that, 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 that really upsets me. 
I try not to make my followers waste money. How many times have I told you, don't, don't buy this and don't buy that. Start with a pencil. Because I, I see no point in you wasting your money on a tool or a product unless you can actually use it. Because if you can't use it, the first thing you do is you ruin it and then you've wasted your money. So, you, you, you know, be, be conscious of, of how much money you're spending on your tools and materials. You know, I'm, I'm really lucky that, you know, I just have to ask. I just have to ask somebody for some tools and they'll send it to me because I, I would push the tool. I would really test it and then I'll send them back a crit on it. And, and I make sure that I tell you guys how they work because I don't want you wasting your money. You, you can't just go buying a box of nibs if you've never tested one. You know, ask information about it. Look at what it does. Can you control this nib? You know, you look at some of these, these vintage Spencerian nibs and, you, you know, you have to sell a kidney to get one of them. But it arrives and it's so sharp and, and springs open and you have no ability to control this. You're not ready for that tool. And what you're going to do, put it in a drawer somewhere and either forget about it or it ends up getting rusty and, you know, be, be conscious of, your, of, of what you're buying. Okay, let's see. Did you, I said prototype nib. <laughs> Everybody's like prototype nib. Be happy with the lettering template, with the lining template. You know, it's 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 in production. You know, Rohan, that's great. I'm I'm really glad that the writing affords you something to aspire to. Because I'm I'm you know, it's 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 about helping you to want to get better. Da, 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 da. Four years on and off, due to wrist pain, trying to learn copper plate. You see, I, I have an entirely new hold which negates pain in the hand. It gives you more dexterity because if you don't know how to hold the tool, if you don't know how to sit, if you don't know where the page is on the desk, you, you are only going to suffer. Um... Oh, why, Rachel? Why are you feeling glum? Oh, I don't feel glum. Now I'm completely confused. Why are you confused, Saucy Creates? Why? Thank you, Rohan. Thank you so much. The manual does help. You know, people who have the manual, they've been... People who have the manual and started working with the, the copper plate script uh, catch-up classes have said it's, it's, it's a revelation. Because the manual, there's so much in it. You just have to be really patient with learning through it. And I'm, essentially what I'm doing is I'm teaching using the manual and how the manual works and the, the principles embedded in the manual. And it's, it's, it's amazing to see what people have said in the, in the question, in the Q and A's after, you know, the Q and A was an hour and a half long, <laughs> so many questions, so many people asking specific things, specific things about what we're working on. And it's about that. That's why the, that's why the, 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 the copper plate catch-up classes are about specific groups so that you can look at them in such detail. I keep calling it a deep dive because it really is a deep dive into those scripts. Till the cows come home. Oh, Echo, I'm glad that you like the, the, the catch-up class. I'm really, really happy about that. Yeah, and you know, John Neal and Scribblers and Paper Ink Arts have tons of nibs. You can get these nibs from them. You know, just just drop them an email. You know, they they are all very, very helpful. They will give you tons of information um, and, and help you to choose the right nib for you. Yes, you can buy the classes on Teachable and uh, the class, the workshops are, you have access to them for a year. Um, if you haven't looked at them in a year, then you're not going to look at them again. Uh, the lectures, you have access to them for two months. So by all means, you know, just, just, just go to the, go to Teachable and, uh, or go to the link in the bio and follow, follow through to Teachable from there. <laughs> I feel like I'm not going to sleep tonight. 
was sitting here attending classes. I was like, moving in September to Scotland. That's great. I'm very, I mean, you know, Scotland. Wow, how lovely. So lovely and clean. Um, okay. Uh, thanks for putting that up, Jinji. Thank you so much, Rich. I'm glad that you're working with a pencil. Tag me, let me see what you're, what you're up to. Uh, thanks so much, Kim. You can use the black wing pencils. You just have to test them. You need to test them to see what, uh, what, what they work like in relation to, uh, to the, the B range of pencils. Thank you so much, those of you answering questions in the live. Creative Miss Diaz, I'd like to hear which nibs that you, you found really useful. And you know what? The thing is that, 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 that Maria, wow, that there's, there's a place for, for all of the scripts. You know, I, I wasn't that keen about modern calligraphy, but you know what? I accepted it because... It's bringing people to calligraphy. My hope was that it would also make those people want to learn traditional calligraphy. Um, and a lot of people who started off with modern calligraphy got to the point where they were stuck because they didn't have the tools to develop further because they didn't study traditional calligraphy. And so they started learning uh, historical calligraphy, traditional scripts. And now that they've gone back to modern calligraphy, they found massive improvements in their script. Um, I, I started traveling around the world so that I could teach modern calligraphers traditional calligraphy because I felt they weren't being supported well enough by the, by the gills because there's a lot of, of, of conflict there between you know, historic traditionalists and, and modern calligraphers on both sides. And, you know, we, we, we have to support each other on this, but we have to get the information right. We have to get that information correct. Otherwise, you know, you, you might as well give up. You know, if, 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 if you're just writing calligraphy, then just do away with all the names. Just just call it all calligraphy. You know, if, 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 that's, if that's your aim, then, you know, be, be conscious of it. It's, it's really important. That sense of responsibility, it has to be something that we all, we all stand up for. Oh, quills. Oh, I love quills. Um, I, I wouldn't go to Hunt 101 just yet. I would, I would, I would probably... It depends on, on how you cut your quill and how rigid it is. Okay, so I have to go because... Um, because Ginger and I are doing a Clubhouse Live, a, 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 a talk on Clubhouse at 7. So in, an, in, 40, in 50 minutes... Um, I'm just going to, oh my God, look at all these questions. It's a shame that, uh, that, that Instagram cuts all the questions off now. Uh, I was writing. I'm great that that helped you, Jane. I'm really, really great that that little chat helped you with, you know, working out how to improve your writing. <laughs> Rohan, now, now. I, I agree, you know, Jane, that's, that's a great point. You know, teachers must be honest if they are teaching their style. That's, that's a brilliant comment. That is, that is super. Glad you guys enjoyed the lecture. Glad it's an eye-opener. Inks by Kurotaki. Love Kurotaki. Love, love Kurotaki. God, look at all these comments. Oh, gosh. Guys, guys I'm really, really happy that you... Okay, um, my goodness. Okay, so I'm at the end of the comments. I will post this uh, on IG Live later on. Um, and I will, uh, I'll see you guys on Clubhouse. Ginger, I'll see you in a bit. Bye.